Okay, our, um, our next presenters, I'm going to actually introduce Matai's first ever MRI trainee. Um, she hails from the far north, uh, and just last week she became our first qualified medical imaging technologist. Um, she previously worked at Starship, um, and I'm just going to ask Taylor to come onto the stage, and while she does that, um, I just want to acknowledge that the next talk is in loving memory of Mr. Tutarangi Tuta Narimu. Uh, Tuta was 61, um, no Ngāti Parau, and I got to experience his beautiful, beautiful whareponga, although I think his roads were pretty challenging getting to the marae. Um, and he dedicated his life to serving the Tairawhiti community, as many of you know. Uh, Tuta was um, scheduled to speak here tonight and he was to travel with me next week to the University of Auckland, um, but unfortunately we lost him. Um, he will not be with us, and um, so I'd like to hand over to Taylor. Kia ora. Thank you, Lee. Um, I just wanted to open this talk today um, just with the karakia that Tuta taught to us here in the MRI unit. Um, so we say this karakia before every scan that we do for all of our participants who come to see us, so thank you. Tui au irunga, tui au iraro, karungo te pō, karungo te au, e te kōrero, e te wānanga, tuturua whiti whakamoa ki a tēnā. Haumie, huie, tai ki e. Thank you. Um, I would also like to introduce our next speakers. Um, firstly, Professor Miriam Scadding from the University of Auckland. Um, all of us at Matai have adopted Miriam. Um, she has a big heart and it resonates with all of us um, at Matai. And um, Miriam is the Associate Professor of Anatomy and Medical Imaging at the Faculty of Medical Health Science at the University of Auckland. And she's also the Principal Investigator with Matai Medical Research. She worked very closely with Tuta on the methamphetamine um, research program. And I'd also like to introduce uh, Dr. Mariam Taibi, uh, also in her other life, a fellow medical imaging technologist from Iran. Um, she later moved to New Zealand where she has been um, spending more time in the field of engineering. And a lot of the beautiful pictures that you've seen today are as a result of Mariam's um, wonderful expertise in post-processing um, and medical imaging uh, from data acquired at Mata. Um So without further ado, Miriam and Mariam. <laughs> I'm going to talk a little bit today about um, discoveries from our methamphetamine brain and heart recovery study. So what do we know about meth? We know that it's a very powerful um, stimulant, um, causes um, euphoria. We also know it's incredibly addictive. And once you've had it once, you want a bigger dose next time, so you don't get the same hit from each dose. And so it is, once you get on this bad tr um, train, you need more and more to get the same effect from it. Um, so what do we know about the effect of, of meth on the brain and the heart? We know that meth causes widespread um, inflammation throughout the whole body. So this is, affects the brain. It also affects the, um, the heart and vascular system. So what happens in the, the brain, you have this neuroinflammation. This causes destruction of the brain, and the brain shrinks in size. In blood vessels, it attacks the walls of the blood vessels, and these kind of fur up and become narrower, so less blood can get to the organs. And this results in a premature heart attack and stroke. And those people who have been on methamphetamine for a long time usually end up dying not from any brain disease, but from having premature heart attacks or, or heart failure. Um, and probably most in, tragically is that, that um, our, is our tamariki, is that if your tamariki are seeing the whānau um, use methamphetamine, it becomes the norm, and they're much more likely to use it themselves as they get older. So there's lots of things that we don't know about uh, methamphetamine and the brain and the heart. First of all, are those changes that occur in the brain and the heart reversible if you stop using them? And um, if your brain has shrunk, it's not going to grow back. But these neuroinflammatory processes that are going on in the brain um, that cause the brain to be destroyed, 
Do they continue on after you continue use, or do they stop as well? And this is one of the big um, um, areas of research that we're using, um, particularly uh, the, the types of scans that Paul Condren has just spoken to us about with the Mazda. Um, and so um, we're using those to see, do these neuroinflammatory changes go away, or do they persist, and how long they persist for? Um, and for heart disease, this, this study, we really don't know, nobody really knows whether any of the changes to the heart are reversible. And again, this is part of the study that we'll be focusing on a little bit later into the project. So what is the cost of uh, meth use in New Zealand? Um, depending on where you read, somewhere between 1 in 100 and 1 in 25 people in New Zealand have used meth or are using meth. And I'm sure that in some areas of New Zealand, it's actually much higher, especially in the remote rural areas. Um, and the societal cost of methamphetamine, when you include the crime and health care and effects on, on the whanau, is in the region of a billion dollars. This is a billion dollars that could go towards much more sort of, um, constructive uh, things. There's a little bit of good news, though. So um, data from ESR, and Brett Cowan, who from ESR, discussed a little bit about this before, um, shows the incidence of meth use um, in New Zealand. And from this graph, we can see in the light blue that pretty much everywhere in New Zealand uses um, methamphetamine. Um, some places, um, like the Eastern Bays, which is outlined in red there, which includes um, obviously Drafty, has really very high use per capita per day. So the good news is that the, the dark blue bar is the data from this first quarter of this year. And it's compared with the light blue bar, which is the data from the last 12 months. And what we can see is that there, throughout the country, there has been a dramatic reduction in the amount of methamphetamine con consumed. And in particular, um, the Eastern Bays has done particularly well with a 30% reduction. So yay, Gisborne. Um, so, how is imaging going to help? So, <clears throat> it will help us to um, learn about um, the mechanisms of damage, how much damage is reversible or not, um, and what sort of therapies people who we are, um, are working with um, need. If you have severe brain shrinkage, for example, you need support. It's not, the brain is not going to come back. But as uh, Morris Curtis was talking about um, earlier, there are new... Um, um, therapies on the horizon for brain disease, and if we better understand the mechanism of what's, how these drugs affect the brain, we'd have a better idea of what sort of treatment we can target to these uh, abnormalities. Um, and, uh, oh, there we go. and some of you might have seen around town, this is our methamphetamine recovery program um, poster. And... Um, this is our team. So the team is, has got two sort of wings to it. You have the scientific wing and you've got the community wing. And without the community wing, uh, the scientific wing just would not exist. So it's purely due to that community involvement that this is, is we're getting the work done we, that we are doing on, on methamphetamine. And of course, Tuta was a, a, a great leader of the, the community aspect of this project. Um, and um, Tuta... Um, I say Tutor should have been here doing this talk, but he sadly isn't. But there's no one who could better describe the effect that the methamphetamine recovery program has had on the participants in the study than Tutor. Unfortunately, um, he gave an interview um, with RNZ uh, earlier this year, and I'd just like to um, play a very short soundbite where he describes the impact of the study on, on his whanau. Yeah, you know, because some... When you're looking at gauging, um, say, final reach out, and they want support with, with with their addiction, so how we kind of gauge how they're doing well is through what they tell us, you know, or through they've gone through some kind of residential care, and we kind of gauge their um, their recovery through what what they've just gone through. With this. With the study, it's given us a lot more. It's actually given us something that we can look at physically what's going on with our body. 
You know, you can now look at a scan and you can look at your brain and your heart. You know, and our team will be able to tell you where you're at. And through abstinence, you go back again there and have a look, you know, a few weeks later and see if there's any changes that, 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 are, in, that are showing through the scan. And that, that, that is a huge, you know, for our whanau that are in that space because it's got a sense of they've got something real that they can gauge their recovery journey with and they're really looking forward, you know, to one, starting the study and two, following up with the next scan and then the next scan. So it's kind of like helping them in their own recovery journey. Very powerful. Yeah, we... So thank you very much. I will hand over to Miriam, who is the person at Marta who actually makes all the beautiful images and does data processing. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Miriam. Um, yeah, so now I'm going to talk a little bit more about our project at Matai. Um, our project is very unique globally, and I have reasons for it. We have a high level of community engagement. Um, with the support of our community wing, we had the high retention rate of 65%, which is very unique in these type of group of um, studies. Based on the, our latest review in the literature, we found that the only 3% percent of the studies happened uh, in the world that was uh, looking at following up the, these type of uh, participants for about uh, one year, and our study is categorized in this um, group. And thanks to the advanced MRI machine that we have at Matai, we are able to look at a very different areas and aspects of the health of the brain and the heart, and that makes our study, again, unique. So a little bit about the design of our study. So our study, uh, we have two group of participants, the methamphetamine user who started the recovery journey and the healthy control group that are matched with our case group. So our study has multiple phases, four phases. Uh, we started um, when, when participants stopped taking meth and then we followed them for about a month, three months and six months in total about one year. And um, this allows us to do two type of different analysis, the longitudinal analysis and also the cross-sectional by comparing with our healthy group. So we're acquiring MRI data from, uh, from the uh, participants' brain and heart, and also we are doing some cognitive tests to examine our participants' um, problem-solving abilities and uh, executive functioning. So we are investigating at different areas of the brain. We're looking at different structures and the fiber tracts and the wiring of the brain. We're looking at different brain tissues and if there is any inflammation. We're looking at the brain function and vasculature and blood flow in the brain. And as well, we're looking at the heart and the health of the heart and the functionality of the heart. So the next couple of slides, I'm gonna show you some promising results from our single subject that we had. Um, so this one specifically talking about the targeted MRI that our, my colleague um, Paul explained it to you very well. So in his slides, you saw it black and white, but I'm showing you in a green color, so I hope that you don't get confused. But um, in research, we're usually trying to segment everything. And this is one thing that we did segment the healthy brain. And you can see the healthy area showing the normal tissue showing with a green color. And here is the uh, brain of a meth user, long-term meth user, that you can see it, um, that you hardly see any green color, and majority of the area of the brain is with the bright red, which shows the inflammation. But the good news is when, after six months of the recovery, we are just uh, seeing these uh, green colors, again, or the normal tissue is showing up, and that's uh, the promising result. The other technique is called myelin imaging. So our brain is made of billions of neurons, and as you can see here, this neuron is um, covered by the uh, fatty layer called um, myelin that can help to speed up the transferring the messages from the brain to the body. And that's the, exactly the area that is damaged by a methamphetamine. So here this, in this myelin imaging, we can show you that in this gray band, you can see that the healthy brain uh, should be, the, the, the volume of the myelin in the brain should be, and this yellow dot shows that this um, long-term meth user, the myelin level is lower than the healthy range. However, after six months, we can see that this yellow dot is getting closer to the healthy range. And you can see here the number also increasing. That's another promising result. And that's exactly what Tuta nicely mentioned about 
uh, why this study can be also a great um, encouragement for our participants to be part of our study and see these uh, promising results. So where are we going to go in future? So we, in our team at Matai and University of Auckland and in collaboration with our community team of the Tauranga Health, New Zealand people, and Manaki Moves Trust, we are going to expand our study from these 20 participants in our pilot study to 100 people. And we're hoping that by this one, we can provide more um, support for people to start it in their recovery journey and also provide more education for them. And uh, as well as we're providing more scientific evidence about this um, recovery of the um, brain uh, during the um, abstinence program. And all of these couldn't be possible without uh, the help of our huge help of our uh, funders and sponsors and also our community wings. And um, so, and as well as our amazing team that we have at Matai and the University of Auckland. With that one, I want to thank you so much for your attention. <laughs>